Okay, it looks like it's 4 o'clock, and we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, we may have some others joining us as we begin. Uh, welcome to our webinar with Hidden Lovers. Uh, we appreciate you uh, attending this session. And today we have with us Steve and Raj from Hidden Lovers, and they're going to present their product to us um, over the next 45 minutes. We will save our last 15 minutes of the session for a Q&A. If you have questions during the session, please type them in the question area box here at the bottom um, of the, the screen, and we will make sure we get your question answered at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Raj. Actually, this is uh, Steve Zushin. Oh, Steve. I'm Western. sorry, Steve. Oh, that's OK. That's OK. okay. And uh, thanks for the introduction, Lori. And mm -hmm. So everybody who's on the call, just want to introduce ourselves. Uh, we are Hidden Lovers. We're a risk management toolkit for advisors. And uh, we have recently become an integrated partner with AssetBook. Um, so today, we're Raj, uh, one of the co-founders of Hidden Lovers, is going to talk a little bit about the, where the company was developed, uh, where we're at today, walk you through the software, and uh, talk about that integration with AssetBook and what that means for you as users of AssetBook and hopefully uh, adopters of Hidden Levers. So uh, with that, I'll introduce Raj Udeshi, uh, one of the co-founders of Hidden Levers. Raj, you on the call? OK, Steve, thanks so much. Um, hi, guys. Uh, thanks for being a part of this. Hidden Levers is a company that started uh, about two and a half years ago. We're in the Bloomberg Technology Incubator up in New York City. And uh, looking um, from the trading floor to the rest of the fiduciary um, environment, you know, whether it was RIAs, uh, wirehouse brokers, even the private banks right next door to us, we started noticing their lack of ability to deal with uncertainty, especially the commodities crash in 2008 and then, of course, the financial crisis. And all the things that we had, uh, like a, a well-paid PhD to, to quantify regressions um, and also create scenarios by hand, uh, economic scenarios, uh, and then also a $2,000 a month Bloomberg terminal on every desk. Now, those pieces were lacking, especially for RIAs, especially for wirehouse brokers. And even if they could afford those things, they weren't really accessible or made for the new platforms like iPad and everything. Uh, and of course, nothing client-facing. So we decided to start a company and solve these problems and create a whole new kind of risk management toolkit. That's Hidden Levers. Now, you can see uh, this whole area is about scenario modeling and uh, getting portfolio-specific impact of big picture economic events. Uh, the correlations engine that we created uh, could be, we figured out we could use that to even choose investments or be tactical uh, or choose a portfolio manager. You can screen by uh, beta to a macro trend. So if you wanted the best oil exposure or commodities exposure, how about starting that search with uh, beta to oil? Really easy. We put a mini Bloomberg right in the system, economic data and charting at your fingertips, and really easy to export to iPad, uh, sometimes including your branding if you choose. OK, so I'm going to, and of course, there's reports uh, uh, with, that come with it all with your own branding and skin. OK, so first things first, the question on your mind is, you know, how hard is it, even if this product is great, to get my portfolios in here? So the first thing I'm going to do is show you the asset book integration. Here is my asset book portfolio screen. This is probably really familiar to you guys, uh, your households, etc. just normal stuff that you guys do every day in asset book. OK. So now that's my, uh, that's my portfolio here. And when I go to Hidden Levers, all I really have to do is log in. I'm going to log in not with a demo account, but a blank account with no portfolios at all. OK, so there you see no portfolios at all. Now, if you guys have multi-custodian or uh, you know, different, different things, then there's plenty of other ways to add a portfolio. You can cut and paste in Excel. You can upload it as a CSV. Not too hard, but you guys have it utterly easy. Just click Import, choose Asset Book or TD or you know, whoever you're with. I'd, I'd like to say Asset Book. Uh, type in the passcode. And you get that from the Asset Book folks. And uh, you know, just activate. That's really it. They'll give you a specific passcode uh, based on based on when you ask. So there, that, they're all uploaded. And account sync means 
that uh, you, when you make changes to the portfolio, that comes straight through to us. You don't have to update it again and again. And now your life is a lot easier. Bam, there's all the portfolios just in one shot in our system. Okay, that wasn't too hard. And uh, okay, so that's the that's the import. Uh, so as we look at the tool now, at least that that worry of uh, importing portfolios is is not on your mind. So first things first, I'm going to show you how that correlations engine works, and then I'm going to take you through a workflow of uh, scenario modeling, and then showing that in a client-facing way, if you so choose. There's some white papers that we have on site. Uh, you're welcome to look at them on how we do our stats methodology, very similar to beta regression, and then how we create forward-looking economic scenarios. Um, but I'll get into that white paper in a second. Really what is important is that correlations engine underneath. What we're doing is taking the two-year and 10-year regression, similar to beta regression, between 130 economic indicators and the whole universe of securities, so stocks, ETFs, and mutual funds, ADR shares, MLPs, REITs, also fixed income, so individual QCIPs, and bond funds and bond ETFs, 15 major currencies, we also support options based on the underlying correlation to the equity. So once we have all of that econometric data, it's a ton of it, it refreshes daily. The important part is to get you what is relevant. So we have an industry groupings filter that takes it from what is causation, sorry, what is correlation in general to what is actually relevant and causal. So now you have a quantified macro profile for every security and even for a whole portfolio. And then once we have all that mapped, it's a question of layering economic scenarios on top. An economic scenario is nothing more than a series of movements in the economic indicators. So let's go to a real macro profile for a security. This is JP Morgan. And what you're looking at there is, of course, it's S&P beta over the past 10 years. You could do two years as well. For every 1% move in the S&P at any given time, JP Morgan had an aggravated uh, move of 30% more either direction. And you can see the chart there. Uh, these are negative correlation, right, uh, with yields, especially 10-year. Uh, banks generally move in inversely to yields, um, their share prices. And so you can see that inverse correlation quantified there. Uh, of course, uh, JP has had its own fundamental-based problems, but over the long term, that's there. The other part here that's very relevant but statistically neutral are these housing indicators, commercial foreclosures just statistically neutral. And you know, a five-year-old kid can see that these graphs look nothing alike. Home prices, that's Case-Shiller, actually. So Case-Shiller and this you know, JP Morgan's price action, nothing alike. And so anybody on a fundamental ar argument two years ago would have been completely wrong to say that WAMU or the purchase of Bear Stearns would beleaguer the, the you know, uh, JP Morgan's future. They have other things taking them down, but definitely the housing market hasn't been one of them. OK. As a, a compare that to Bank of America, another big bank in the United States, and here you have home prices being the number one most impactful indicator. And for every 1% uh, move in the case Shiller, expecting uh, double that in Bank of America. You can see that on the 10-year and the 5-year, highly correlated, uh, I would say a slave to home prices you know, for Bank of America. So this is what we were able to do for you uh, for every single security. You see also additional risk measures. This gets involved in our scenario modeling. Uh, annualized volatility, that's just standard deviation there. And then how bad did it get for Bank of America over the past 10 years? And what was that peak to trough drawdown? Uh, if you do want all the correlations, we're not parochial about it. You can have them. You know, the data is there. If you make an, maybe you can make an esoteric hedge fund out of some of these crazy correlations here. Indian rupee, you know, uh, uh, different things going on. Uh, inverse correlation to NASDAQ there again. So, but, the, you know, if you, that's just uh, dip, dipping in the, car the capillaries, uh, and hedge funds do that all the time, but these major correlations are what count. Okay, we do this also for a portfolio at large. And uh, so any portfolio I have, let's say, uh, let's say George Tree Branch, looks like he's got a pretty mutual fund heavy portfolio. Okay, now I can just go and get its macro profile. So first things first, it's going to give me uh, the actual portfolio breakdown, see what's in the kitty. 
I can even see these scenarios that are highly impactful. I'll get to that. The next tab, <clears throat> I see um, which economic indicators are really pushing on this portfolio, and it'll even chart them out for me. So it does P beta of this portfolio is uh, about half, so half the move there. Agricultural commodities seems to have a uh, interesting tie to the portfolio. Okay, so and you can see the inverse over here uh, to ten-year treasuries. So the portfolio has actually done decently well. The treasuries have gone down. Same thing, annualized volatility and max drawdown here for the portfolio. And you know, for all you folks that uh, might be MPT centric. Uh, we were asked, uh, since you guys are so darn good at these correlation automations, can you just tell me the level of correlation within the secur securities of the portfolio? Uh, so we're able to do that here. You can even download that as a correlation matrix. And uh, fiduciaries have asked for other features built here, uh, you know, finding and discovering the efficient frontier uh, or uh, that kind of tire alignment, am I in balance? calculation, so we'll build that as a feature. And then another screener that helps discover securities that are not correlated to the portfolio at all. <clears throat> so that's what's coming. In terms of how the company works, we're very much the opposite of, uh, you know, Advent. Uh, we, we try to listen to our customers a lot. There's a give feedback button. Uh, we're responsive on customer service, and uh, we build things, uh, you know, you lo a lot of times customers are surprised that things end up on the system that are, you know, they suggested two weeks ago. So. That is a pro macro profile for uh, a whole portfolio. Okay, let's go to scenarios now. Scenarios are what we layer over all this econometric data. And uh, a good place to start is historical scenarios. So here there's no forward-looking uh, thought experiment. It's very much about history and an encyclopedic entry in history. 87 crash, uh, the Iranian revolution in 79, and most recently we have the financial crisis in uh, late 2008. So all we did here was take the day of uh, Lehman's implosion in uh, just after Labor Day and down to the market bottom in March and say, well, hidden levers, show me the delta and the levers in that, in that era. What was, what was the change? And so even this offers a lot of fruit. You see yen going up in that era. Uh, you see the S&P tanking 50%. But really important stuff that is valuable now. You see, um, you see gold in that era down 21%. You know, so food for thought for all the gold bugs that still think gold is going to reach 2,000 in this crisis uh, and, and going on in Europe. Uh, and then negative T bills. You know, that's also food for thought uh, when you know for all the folks that were surprised last summer when yields came in, even after our own treasuries got downgraded, yields came in. Uh, you know, completely irrational event. Uh, but irrational events are happening all the time. You know, negative yields, us paying the government to borrow our money. That's constantly happening. So very predict, good predictive value there. So now it comes uh, the jump to forward-looking scenarios. We uh, are not in the business of future prediction. It's more about modeling uncertainty. You know, So we always talk in risk parity. Whatever is going on, we examine all possible outcomes. So you can see here from just the monetary scenarios, deflation, inflation, stagflation. Uh, you see QE3 is a success and a failure, even though QE3 hasn't been announced yet. Um, we, we were able to take into account with this machine uh, nuances of uh, you know the contours of a scenario that that VAR or Monte Carlo could never do, and uh, rising interest rates. We hear that a lot thrown around in the news, but you know is it driven by positive manufacturing data and, and uh, purchasing data and uh, you know general confidence in the economy and and GDP growth, or is it driven by food prices and commodities uh, screaming up and the dollar losing value and and Ben Bernanke caught between um, a rock and a hard place. So, so those are what some things we're able to do. The most uh, popular ones at the moment deal with the euro. Okay, and so I'm going to actually log out and go to uh, our normal um, demo account. That should do it there. Okay, so here's our normal portfolios that we use to demo, and I'm going to go to. Scenario. Uh, sorry, let me go back here to scenarios and deal with one of the outcomes of Europe here. So eurozone collapse. You know, we also had eurozone crisis averted and a single uh, exit for, by Greece. These are the big broad stroke things that can happen. You know, one domino falling, or all the dominoes falling, or no dominoes falling. And so that's uh, 
that's how to examine uncertainty, you know. Uh, how do we create a, a forward-looking scenario? Well, there's four elements, and they were, they're covered in that white paper. The first one, of course, is, a, is historical analogs, as we saw. <clears throat> so in the Eurozone collapse scenario, what was discussed by the economic research team was things like the Mexican peso crisis in the mid-'90s. You had a run on a currency very close to the United States. Uh, the 1999 uh, Russian default, so a default on European soil, that was due to the long-term capital management fallout. And then also the Argentine uh, peso crisis and default in the in the uh, early 2000s. So we we have a sense of how the levers move then, uh, and they affect how we place them now. Uh, the second element is correlations between the economic indicators. So uh, we ha are also measuring the two-year rolling correlation between the levers. And so you know what is the relationship currently between these levers? That's changing. That's taken into account. Number three is technical analysis. So these are all time series of data. If I just click one, also if you notice when I click things, what you think will appear appears right there, and that's how we build it. You know, very much. Uh, you don't. We don't want you to do too much work. Just really easy. You can see here at a dollar twenty resistance back in '03. Uh, in '04 that was support. You have a head and shoulders built off those levels in '06 and uh, even 2010. Spot on pivot off a dollar twenty so really easy support there and if you notice I'm not doing anything to get that price and date it just comes up as I scroll over okay so that's technical analysis and the fourth piece is uh, is analyst predictions those come into our purview you'll notice here this is an article from a very very recent uh, uh, Wall Street Journal uh, Steve actually found this and uh, it's about what economists expect from a Greek uh, euro exit and so you have several banks, Mitsubishi, Citi, Danske Bank, Nomura, HSBC, Bank of America, rundown, really easy rundown of how these guys see scenarios playing out. You know, we're not the first ones to ever do this. Uh, we just uh, we add a lot of value, but we aren't the first ones to do this. Here from Citigroup, you notice just this paragraph. Uh, they are wrapping these scenarios around different levels of where the euro is, the euro dollar exchange rate, $1.20. Uh, you know, as a managed departure, something like the GM type scenario that happened here, um, something that's worse than that, a dollar thirteen, and then the worst case scenario, euro falling to uh, parity at a dollar. So that's Citibank's um, way of doing things. We do things the same way. We we talk about a primary lever, uh, the euro. We're we're not as rosy on it as they are. But here now, I'm going to just choose a portfolio. I'll choose this one. And it's going to give me the economic impact on the left. Everything is adjustable to your own assumptions. And on the right, the portfolio-specific impact. So here you see a portfolio very much composed of um, precious metals ETFs. You've got, you got a silver ETF from power shares, and then the GLD, and uh, a healthcare spider, et cetera. Pretty diversified, but very commodity, uh, sorry, very uh, precious metals heavy, taking a 20% hit, okay, based on hidden levers economic research. So now uh, you're free to model this as you like. I can move these individually, or I can move them in tandem, how they move in real life, based, again, on that two-year correlation. So let's say I thought the S&P was going to dip below 1,000, and that could be because of technical reasons. It could be because of economic research you've read, et cetera. There is a lot of support at 1,000, but met much more at 800. You can see that. So let's say I thought it was going to go to 800. Just drag it down to 800. Maybe it, it pierces that level. Things tend to do that. And the other levers have moved according to that two-year correlation. And the portfolio impact is also there, dynamic, down about 33%, 34% uh, on that extra 200-point move. You know, so that large move uh, produces quite a, a, an aggravated result there. Okay, now let's say there are other tweaks that I would make here. Uh, maybe I'm not. Maybe I am a gold bug, despite hidden levers saying that uh, precious metals are going to be weak uh, as as you lose value in the euro. You know, an 83 cent euro looks like a the dollar is quite strong. So you know, it makes sense that anytime you have a strong dollar, anything priced in dollars like gold and silver, they lose value, right? So, but you may completely disagree with that. That's fine, and you might be. A, uh, saying gold goes to 2,000 no matter what, no matter what. Okay, 
And if silver accommodates, right, uh, that gold price, probably silver goes up. Maybe it doesn't go up to this uh, bubble territory over here, but, you know, let's see. Where's it been in the past two years? Okay, these kind of crests. There's a lot of support here. Maybe it goes to $35. So I'm going to type in exactly what I want, $35, instead of sliding. And what you, what you see here is the portfolio uh, is impacted based on the economic outlook that you put in. So uh, although some of these other things that are highly tied to equities and the S&P uh, tank, especially that small cap ETF, uh, the energy uh, spider here, uh, the precious metals ETFs now, they perform as the hedge maybe that you sold your client on, whatever you do. So they react the way that the economic outlook is here, and that's based on correlation. Uh, so now here, you've mitigated your impact and, had your, and been able to show off your precious metals holdings. Okay, so I can save this as my own, even change the copy, anything I want. Okay, but they, the scenarios are kept up to date, and um, you know we even talk about how priced in they are, and that's a function of how close to the euro projection we are, and so it moves every day. Okay, let me reset that. Now, there's a few other things I can do here. I can add a portfolio to compare, right? And uh, the greatest thing about this machine is it's done with correlation, right, as opposed to standard deviation or anything Monte Carlo does. The best thing you're able to do is get hedging ideas. And what's that based on? That's based on inverse correlation and non-correlated securities. Uh, we do have a screener to find those ideas. You know, put in your economic inputs and find ideas that do well in scenarios. Uh, but we thought we'd make it easier and create a hedge hedging wizard right here, step by step, finding your losers, replacing them, and seeing what they look like. So here now I choose my portfolio and whatever scenario I want to hedge against. Here I see that portfolio impact, again, 20% down, right? Uh, and I could have chosen um, scenarios that I've created. See, that's my scenarios. Anytime I save something, it goes into my scenarios. So, okay, finally, I, I admit to myself that I'm overexposed in precious metals, and I just want to reduce it by half. I've got a GLD holding. I've got... Um, Swiss francs and another gold holding. Let me get rid of this silver guy over here. Okay, down 45%. I'm going to get rid of that one and the precious metals one here. Those are really impacted. So, And I'll keep half of them just in case. So you can choose uh, to get hedges from your cash on hand or sell losers to get winners. Uh, you'll know this is a portfolio right now. Uh, by the way, uh, I did, Steve was asking me, uh, you know, we, we see the in the asset book area how you have households. Uh, that is something we're developing. The nesting, right now we do portfolios only, but we will be moving to uh, households to accommodate that from, for you guys. Uh, so moving on, now I, I do have these positions I want to get rid of, right? So next step, find the replacements. Uh, there's that screener results right in place. Um, these are good suggestions that are poised to do well based on their inverse and or non-correlated uh, nature over the, over the past 10 years and two years. So I find a, a few things. I can, of course, change the criteria by which the search is done, including the asset types, region, sector, uh, and then even fundamental uh, criteria like this, right, stuff that you might be used to, and even, e even risk criteria involved in the search. You know, these, this was directly uh, advice given to us by a few advisors. Uh, we have 329 as of today uh, that are subscribers, and they, they told us, we, I'd like to search by volatility also, and so we just built it. Easy. Okay, but I'm happy with uh, the asset type, and let me see if there's anything I find in here that I like. Okay, an insurance company. Insurance company that's up 14% over the past year, and with a, a minimal yield, but 14% over the past year in the bloodbath we've had. Um, you know, that sounds good. Let's take that. You know, it's easy. It's not hard to see why. An insurance company is just a big bucket of bonds, so really high-quality bonds, and that's worked. Okay, what else do we have? I've got a Vanguard uh, extended treasury, uh, extended duration treasury ETF. Let me try that. I've got a few of them. I've got a Vanguard ETF. I don't like ETFs. I like mutual funds better. So uh, let me try that. It's got another yield, and it was. It's been up 47% in the past year. 
and that's my even based on inverse correlation how how it should do some performance okay so I'm going to replace it with those two and now see the performance so what's happened back to my original screen of scenario modeling in addition to the decision investments uh, portfolio I've got a hedged decision investments portfolio right next to it if you remember this one with the uh, the silver and precious metals ETF there now this guy has instead that insurance company and a treasury bond fund you can see them performing um, mitigating damage to the portfolio and really it's done it by half almost half and that's that so this is where your portfolio investment committee has a happier day, easier to make portfolios, easier to, to do the rebal, easier to change out uh, you know, uh, things that just haven't been working and make adjustments to the model. And then the next step is perhaps they want to show that, uh, you know, the asset gatherers want to show that, the people maintaining relationships with the clients want to show that to, to them. So uh, I'll show you one report and that will be the end. Several use cases for this, uh, two I've mentioned, uh, one is uh, the rebel kind of meeting, uh, or maybe where you've you've done a uh, added a hedge or been tactical to, for some situation, and you want to show show that off, right? So those are two cases. Uh, the uh, another great one, uh, which uh, our, our subscribers have found a lot of success with, um, certain folks, uh, you, you know, a family office getting a hundred million dollar uh, uh, of new assets under management using this tool, uh, comparing. A prospect's portfolio. You know, we have a, go, a few ghosts in here, ghost prospect, to their model, and saying, "Here's where I can help you." Let's talk about one of these. Uh, the well-hedged model is a nice one. And so, there's a number of ways you can do it. Just like you can make a you know a pizza out of uh, a, a million pizzas out of like a ten ingredients. So same here. You know, you you take these two portfolios and let's stress test both of them under the same economic stresses. So maybe the ones that you've saved as your own. Uh, maybe the ones that are really popular right now in the news and they're they're calling you about. Maybe it's a historical comparison to the present, you know, Iran Revolution in 79 and how that played out versus what a blockade of the Straits of Hormuz can look like now. Okay, we, we know that the private banks, uh, from working with them so much, uh, they talk in risk parity. So they'll take a situation like Europe and take all potential outcomes and stress test one portfolio. You know, the another innovation here is adding another second portfolio. So you don't just have a risk management tool, you have a sales tool. Let's run that portfolio. Oh, sorry, the report. Okay, one thing you notice is you're, it's easy to add your own branding to this, uh, your own disclaimers even, just really great. So it's very much your report, it's dated, so you're not committing yourself to too much or anything like that. Uh, first, up top, you see, you know, what's in the kitty, right? So John Vanderman, our uh, poor ghost uh, prospect, he's he's just a slave of CNBC, and he's got spiders. He's got uh, Google and Cat and IBM, just large cap equities. Nothing really that is going. It's, it's an S and P heavy portfolio. And then you have the well hedged model, a totally different beast, the Pimco high yield bond fund. Uh, the lion's share of it, uh, solid cash position, and um, this small uh, insurance policy, uh, Rydex, you know, now Guggenheim, inverse S&P strategy, and it, it's uh, accounted a lot for the decay that the ETFs have a problem with, so people like it, but, you know, just a small smidge uh, of the portfolio as a insurance policy. So just on the first page, you know, this could be a, a, a big mailer that you send, um, to all your customers, maybe it's part of a quarterly update, <coughs> and maybe it's a you know in-hand PDF report with an individual prospect. And here you're just talking about well, these are the things that can happen in Europe. Big, broad stroke things that can happen. John, you're going to sink or swim with Europe, <coughs> and that's it. Uh, even even something you should account for already, you know, things that people have hedged for now, you're going to suffer damage. Whereas the model that you might offer. You don't, you don't. Uh, it's not completely bloodless on that day, but it, you're definitely doing way better than John. And you know, you sacrifice a little alpha here if the things go the other way. But that's and that's a conversation I know you guys are having. That risk versus reward. 
why haven't why hasn't my portfolio done as well as market returns? You know, it's because of the hedges, and so uh, that's a sacrifice. So now you have a conduit to have that conversation, and then of course the Greek exit in isolation. If you haven't hedged for that, then um, you haven't been too awake, right? So here uh, now you're able to show that uh, the outcome of each individual um, scenario outcome in a drama-free way, right? Uh, the euro all-time lows, retail sales, which came out yesterday, continuing downward, S&P dipping under 1,000, very authoritative and, and data-centric as opposed to, you know, sensationalist. And, and then the best part is, you know, in, in something a child could love, showing what the difference is between these two portfolios. I mean, it's really obvious. It's, it's those green bars, that inverse strategy saving the day, and even that boring, boring government bond fund that no one talks about. Everybody talks about Facebook at 100 stories a day, but that government bond fund really, that's the earner. That's the good, stable earner. And you've shown that here, uh, mitigating the damage, you know, or really uh, just a completely different portfolio that does a better job for any retiree, any kind of wealth preservation strategy. That's, you're going to go with this. And so, uh, as you might have guessed, this tool, this uh, report, as well as others we have, has been very successful in get, getting new asset center management for folks. Uh, and even, not just new asset center management, but a new kind of client. Uh, that same fellow that picked up the $100 million uh, in assets under management in Chicago, you know, he is a family office. And so, uh, he, he has to compete with the likes of private banks who are doing this kind of analysis by hand uh, and can afford to for such portfolios. But, you know, um, you, you have a one-two punch where he's able to offer similar risk, you know, state-of-the-art risk management um, uh, functionality and services, that white glove service they expect. And you see uh, an article uh, completely berating Goldman Sachs and how they treat their private clients in the, on the front page of the New York Times. Those two are about it to make a family say, well, hey, I trust you more than I trust all of Goldman Sachs. And so, you know, that's... Um, you can see those articles in RIA Biz and uh, Investment News about some of those stories, having used hidden levers to get new assets under management. Um, I'll leave it there. Uh, there's plenty of other stuff you can do, a lot of data and charting, uh, research stuff, but uh, you know, I just wanted to show you uh, a few of the things we're able to do and do well, and uh, why, why folks have started using us that are fiduciaries. I'll turn it over to, to Steve and the Asset Book crew, and if you have any questions, by all means. Thanks a lot. All right, this is Steve from Hidden Levers. Uh, Lori, are you on the line? Yeah, I'm still here. Uh, yeah, if we have anybody on the line that has questions that you would like to type your question, um, we're going to reserve a few minutes here at the end um, for a Q&A session. All right. Um, I guess in the meantime, while we're still waiting on people to uh, type in those questions, if there are any, we can go over pricing here for the package. Uh, part of that. Part of the pricing here is uh, based on bundles on functionality of the tool. Um, you're welcome to find this pricing package on our website if you go to hiddenlevers.com. Um, there's a pricing and plans drop-down menu there. Um, the basic toolkit is generally uh, used just for the analysis of the tools. Uh, when you look at the pro, that includes all of the client-facing and branded reports. Um, as well as the reports that Roz just went over, we also have a charting package, uh, which is brandable and exportable. Uh, we provide the code so that you can use those charts in a blog or an online newsletter. Um, and that all comes with your branding. We, we allow you to own that and uh, license it out. So we have quite a few clients who actually use those in their newsletters and are quite happy with just the, just the charting features, let alone all the analysis functions. Uh, and then we also have a an elite class which allows uh, any clients that use alternative assets uh, or have custom uh, data feeds that they'd like us to run the regressions on, we do that and support that as well uh, on a more custom and individual basis. Uh, with the elite package, we also uh, cater to different billing options, whether it's with soft dollars or other programs that, that uh, fiduciaries have with the banks that they custody with. Um, and then both those, both those also allow for multiple user logins. So 
the pro and the elite class both allow for five user logins. Uh, the monthly is uh, $600 and $1,000 for the elite. If you go with an annual commitment, Raj, could you stay on annual? There we go. So $500 for the <laughs> for the pro and $1,000 for the elite. Uh, that's with an annual commitment, and it comes out to being two months free on each of those products. Has there been any questions yet, Lori? No, no questions. So uh, you guys are doing a great job if we don't have any questions. So um, I see that the pricing is on the screen. Uh, does anyone have – oh, wait, I do have a question. Um, okay. How does the package track income streams that differ – that different portfolio models produce? Raj, do you think you did that? How does the – how does the uh, scenario model – How does the pack – yeah, how does the package track income streams that different portfolio models produce? Okay, so when you're talking income streams, you're talking fixed income. And, uh, you know, we, we actually owe, it's a great question, we owe a white paper on uh, how our fixed income works. We definitely take into account total return. If I go back to scenario modeling and I choose that same, uh, well, let's talk about a 60-40 portfolio, right? So here you have 60-40 portfolio. You have uh, HEG and and uh, the the uh, spiders. That's it, right? It's, it couldn't be more simple than that. Um, and let's take a scenario, the same one. How about eurozone collapse? Or how about actually let's take a deflation, something very much on the mind of Mr. Bernanke. Uh, deflation, U.S. becoming Japan. So how do we see that playing out? You see 10-year yields coming in hard. You know, we're at records every day. That's pretty drastic. Uh, you see CPI in the negative territory, S&P down at 1,000, and GDP growth slightly into recession territory, right? So that's that bleed down that's happened to Japan over the past 20 years, if that repeats here. Now, uh, there's, there's um, in terms of total return, you can, you can take it into account without, right? So that is the without taking into account fixed income uh, cash flow, or you can talk about there. There is a need to talk about um, the the dividend returns, and so any kind of fixed income instrument, whether it's a non-traded REIT or a bond fund (AGG), or uh, even an apartment building, you know, you can you can put that in uh, as a fixed income. I'll show you that in a second, but here you're able to deal with that total return. Um, and show how that mitigates. I mean, this is just AGG, so you see a little bit, only a little bit of a dividend. And if you take it out to three years, I mean, we, we don't like to get into, uh, we did this as a favor to advisors who want that, you know, to see three years and five years out. But we're not people that, you know, outside of 12 months to a year, that's where we're comfortable doing forward-looking scenarios. Uh, you don't want to, you know, but it does take it, it, does take it into account, the three years, uh, in terms of total return. Okay, that's one part. Um, now, if I go to portfolios, let's say you, you do have a client that has an apartment building, uh, and I want, let's say in, um, in that same decision investments, right, I can enter an individual option. I mean, well, if, from asset book, if you're doing anything options, it'll suck that in. Same with individual QCIPs. But let's say you want to put an extra option in here, you can do that. Or a fixed income instrument here. So this, this will allow for all of your uh, fixed income to come in. So that fixed income, any kind of bond fund or individual QCIP, there's, you know, its nature is, um, it's a hybrid. It's not going to just move on correlation. It, it will have, that will be partly to do with it, especially if it's a, a let's say it's a, a bond for IBM or any kind of equity. So then it has an industry tie. Maybe even it has an individual ticker for that, you know, that's related to. Um, but that industry mapping goes goes into it. And then also the bond math. So you have a mix of correlation <clears throat> math and bond math. You know, normal stuff, convexity, maturity, uh, interest rate risk, cash flow. Those pieces come into it. So you, this is the, one of the first times you have real um, risk analytics done for fixed income instruments in such a robust way. And, uh, you know, again, we've, we've come up with this over the past six, seven months. 
and uh, we do owe the world a white paper on fixed income. So I hope that answers your question. If not, you can expect uh, um, a white paper on our site soon on that. And you can get those white papers just here, how it works, the ones that we have already. Okay, anything else? Okay, no, no I don't see any other questions at this time. Uh, if anybody else has uh, additional questions, um, please go ahead and type them in at this time. Okay, give me one second. In the meantime, we'll bring up a slide with our uh, immediate contact information. So if anybody is interested in getting more information uh, from us about hidden levers. And I would assume you guys would do a, uh, a personalized webinar with someone as well? Absolutely. Yeah, we're happy to do demos. Okay, Anybody good. who is interested can contact us and we can do a um, private uh, demonstration over the over GoToMeeting for the entire firm or the principals or okay. anybody who's interested in looking at it for a firm. And, uh, you know, along with that, just to talk a little bit about hidden levers and our commitment to training is uh, a lot of people feel that after the first demo there is a lot of information thrown at them. And it's true, it is a pretty progressive tool. So one of the things that we do with new clients is we try and commit to uh, offering training and being available for them uh, pretty much whenever they do it. We offer trainings weekly. Um, clients can go onto the site and sign up for those themselves, or they're welcome to give us a call and we can schedule them uh, at our next available slot. Uh, when someone does sign up, we do do an introductory training where we walk them through setting up their portfolios and how to get started, um, either using the scenarios that we've built or altering them and saving them and doing some analysis. And then after about uh, three weeks or a month, we always try and check in if they haven't reached out to us first and do some advanced training. Um, Along with the advanced trainings, one of the things that we do for clients is we have a monthly war room, which is a webinar that all of our clients and subscribers are invited to, uh, where we take a looming economic headline and uh, kind of pull it apart and see how that plays into going into uh, building scenarios and uh, using the tool in context with either building the scenario and doing analysis. So we've gotten really good feedback on that. It helps a lot of our clients feel like uh, you know they're part of the part of the macro research that we do uh, helps them wrap their heads around some of the decisions that we make and also helps them see how we use the tool and, and further put their own economic opinions into the scenarios that we've built uh, to do further analysis for their clients. Okay, I think uh, I don't have any additional questions at this time, Steve and Raj. Um, so I guess we'll go ahead and conclude our, our webinar for today. Uh, I want to thank you guys so much for taking your time today to share your product with us. Uh, and again, folks, if you have any questions or would like to get in touch with the folks at Hidden Levers, um, their contact information is on the screen. And uh, definitely give them a call and, and learn more. All right. Well, thanks so much for the opportunity, Lori. And uh, thanks so much for uh, being open to integrating with us. And hopefully it can make, make life easier for all of our clients, right? Very good. Yes, indeed, indeed. Thanks, guys. I do appreciate it, and let's do this again sometime.